Hello everyone. There's a few things that we can, you know, scientifically say about cooked foods versus raw foods showing some of the dangers or damaging effects or problems with cooked food. To be honest though, none of these things were what inspired me to go on a raw vegan diet or stick to a raw vegan diet. They might have been, um, I'm not saying they didn't play some part in my thinking, I'm not saying they weren't interesting, but ultimately they weren't really the thing that made me commit to this diet, I think. So there's a few things, um, and th my question is I'm not sure how real or how much of a problem a lot of these things are, but the science behind some of the problems with cooked food. The first thing is um, the damage that cooking food does to nutrients. That's something that's well known, the diff different nutrients like uh, vitamins and proteins being damaged by, by heat. And that means that we get less of them when we cook them. But the, even with that, the reality is that um, people aren't really suffering a lot of nutrient deficiencies regardless of that, whether it's vitamin C or whatever. Uh, it seems like if people eat a broad range of food, um, that an exclusively raw diet is not necessary to, uh, for people to withstand deficiencies. Now, whether that would be the case if we start, stopped fortifying foods, I'm not sure, but what we can say about the modern world is that uh, we don't need to go raw to make sure we get all our, 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 our vitamins and nutrients at a level that at least stops deficiency happening, whether it's t so low that it leads towards disease over time. Um, I don't think that's really been proven, but it could be. But that in itself is probably not as, uh, as big a deal for me. Another thing is called digestive leukocytosis. This, um, uh, I'm not really sure, once again, there's not a lot of science behind this. It was a guy called Paul Kuchikov, and his stuff, his study went back to the 1930s in a laboratory in Switzerland, and he saw that this process of digestive leukocytosis, which is um, an increase in the percentage of white blood cells in the body, as a result uh, in response to food but what he s found or suggested from his research was that um, th that didn't happen with raw food but it did happen with cooked food suggesting that the body responds to cooked food like like um, like it's a negative thing like it's a toxin or whatever but if you uh, if you go and have a uh, could try and research that more from what I've seen, I can't find really any other science around that. I can't really find anything in the last 90 years that has really explored that any further. And if, you've, if you have found any, please feel free to send it to me. But I, I don't see anything. Maybe he was completely right. Maybe he's right. But it seems like it's not really been followed up or looked into from what I can see. Um, it, maybe it does happen, but it, it's... Uh, I don't know if it played a big part in me going raw. It might, maybe it did. Um, then, then there's other things that happen with cooked foods. With, with cooked animal products, there's some pretty bad things. We won't go into that because I, I, I don't eat a, an animal product diet anyway. But when it comes to cooked carbohydrates, there's acrylamides. There's uh, the Maillard reaction with sugar. There is... Uh, advanced glycation end products. These are, uh, and, and there's, so there's a bunch of things like this that can get created when we cook food. And some of them are carcinogenic. Uh, I don't know if I said acrylamide, probably did. Some of these are carcinogenic, some of these are, are, are a problem. And certainly the or something I would like to avoid but once again I don't think that that's really the thing that sort of pushed me over the edge and made, made me go raw. Reason being that a lot of these things are not particularly at very high levels um, especially in, in vegan foods and you can steam or cook at a, a low temperature or boil rather than roast or whatever and you can offset a lot of the effects of that the same thing with losing nutrition if you 
cook food within water and you maintain some of that water as a sauce or whatever then a lot of the nutrients are in that you know the minerals and stuff but um so so are these things really the, the problem when it comes to cooked food versus, versus raw food so I, I can understand there's a lot of people who are very rational scientific and all that who say well look um, as long as you you know don't fry your food all the time and roast it all the time as long as you just use steaming and boiling and whatever then it's not too bad um, and they might be right about that maybe it's not too bad especially if you're adding plenty of raw foods into your diet at the same time but none of that was really what made me commit and stick to a raw food diet I've got to be honest um, I think the I think it's all a part of it it's all a part of if I was to put up the the pros and cons of should I eat cooked food should I eat raw food I would probably add those in but it's not the biggest thing for me I, I think honestly the biggest thing is how you personally feel on a diet with cooked food and on a diet with raw food and for me the difference is is very big very obvious very obvious the body works a lot better on a completely raw diet and it, it, it's to me it's just like when you put the ideal fuel into your car rather than a less than ideal fuel and what you get with your digestion and everything uh, feels better, functions better, that you feel better, that you know, it's just simple things like that. So to me it's about what you carry in your body, you're carrying with you all, your, all the time. What you put in your mouth you're going to carry in your body and every moment in your life do you want to be supported by the best fuel, the best nutrition, or second best? And second best, it's not like it's just a little bit worse, it's just like, it just doesn't work as well. And when it comes to, you, you know, if you want to say, what's the healthiest cooked food? Well, I don't know, steamed vegetables, but, and I hear people say this, like, oh, sometimes I have steamed vegetables, and then I go back to raw. Why? Is, is that's, that's my thing, like, raw vegetables are so much better. Like, in terms of taste and flavour. Uh, I, I don't really know, I, I get the idea of people are saying like, oh, well, sometimes I have some steamed cauliflower, and I don't know, I don't really, it's, it's not that much better, is it? It's not, <laughs> it's not that tasty. Uh, you're obviously adding something probably to the cauliflower, or the broccoli, or the whatever. And usually when people say, say to me they have steamed veggies now and again, they usually mean at least that they're eating potatoes, which is not the same to me as eating steamed veggies. Steamed veggies would be something like kale, onions, carrots, cabbage, and you steam that. Broccoli. Um, and that's probably like the least, the, the least unhealthy cooked food or whatever. If you're going into the potatoes territory, that's a starch. Now you're actually replacing fruit. You're replacing um, your carbohydrates with, with uh, starch carbohydrates rather than simple sugars. That's a whole different ballgame. And it, it, if you're really sitting there like you really want to eat potatoes, that's because it's, it's because of the. Um, because it's you've still got a bit of a craving for the potato and and if you do go back and eat it you'll go back and eat it the next day and the next day and the next day I don't know that many people that can do this thing of like eating a cooked food meal and then eating raw food the next week it's, it doesn't work like that your brain doesn't work like that your body doesn't work like that nothing no part of this works like that uh, and, and I really don't believe it matters how long you go raw because it, it, if you go for a really long of being raw, why would you want to risk having a meal of like potatoes or whatever? What's it going to give you? Um, so steamed vegetables, uh, which I really mean steamed vegetables, you know there's probably not much of a problem with it but why? You're still not, still you're not going to feel like, you know, you're still going to realise there's a difference. 
and um, I was watching someone recently making a video and they're talking about fake vitality and the idea that, you know, if someone is, uh, well, they're, they're, it was Durian Rider and he, he said, if someone points a gun to your head, you're going to feel a lot of energy in that moment. <laughs> you're going to feel vitality, but it's not real vitality. You know, all of a sudden you're going to be really, you know, focused and full of energy. But it's fake, you know, and he said it's credit card vitality, you're going to have to pay for it later. And that's what a lot of people are looking for. They're looking for these high experiences, these, like, continuously happy, never coming down, no downside experiences. And it makes people jump around, different, trying different things, and then they feel... And what happens is, I think that people haven't dealt with some of the other issues in their life, so... Sometimes maybe this diet is a bit of a distraction for them. It's, it's, some, it's, it's not really the thing they need to work on. Um, it's, not, or it's not the biggest thing going on with them or the biggest cause of the problems. It may be emotional issues, it might be uh, stress, it might be a number of things. But they go towards diet because they want to feel better. And it does make them feel better, but they go, well, actually, I'd, but they still have the stress, the underlying emotion, and they're wondering why do I have these, these feelings and, and this diet isn't working. And they were using the diet in the wrong way. The diet is not going to solve all the problems of your life, but it's going to make an incredible foundation for you to then solve your other problems. And that's an issue that a lot of people have when they actually go raw and they almost can't stand it because they, they, they don't have food as a crutch to use to ignore things, to push things back, to cover up feelings. And when you don't have that, and, all, and these things come up and are very obvious, you actually have to deal with them. And a lot of people haven't learned to do that. And um, emotions can be you know, painful, confusing, and, and a lot of people don't know what to do with them. Um, so, that's, but that's, that's when, that's the gift. And that's the gift of the raw diet, is you have to then, you get a chance to deal with all these things. Um, So the, really, the, the, the feeling of being raw is not being high all the time or energized all the time. It should be being consistent all the time. It should be not going down all the time and up all the time and up and down and up and down. It's not that. If, if you go into a high state, you're going to come down and you're probably going to go down lower. You really want to stay consistent, I think. And you don't want the diet to be the focus of your life. You don't want to be trying different things every day and see how you feel every day, change it every day, tweak it every day. Um, an enormous butterfly just flew past there. I have never seen a butterfly like that in my life. It's like a black butterfly. Let me try and show you this thing if I can. I don't know if, I can, I don't know if you can see it. That is amazing. Can you see that thing? Okay. So, uh, but anyway, um, it's about how you feel, you know, and and it might expose how you really feel. You might realise you're not getting enough sleep. You may have something in your mind that I only need to sleep six hours and your body might have been saying for the last ten years, no, 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 we need eight hours. All of a sudden you go raw, you take away the stimulants, you take away the caffeine, you take away salt and you're tired and you need to sleep and you need to stop for a while. And that's the gift of the whole thing is it makes, it exposes how you really feel underneath everything. But a lot of people are not happy with that. Um, this is a, a great work. You know, it's, it's a great spiritual practice, if you want to put it that way. It's um, moving away, disconnecting from using food, abusing food. Um, you know, 
overeating, undereating, getting away from all these things, just to a point where you have fantastic food that you enjoy and you will enjoy it more. For anyone that says, you know, cooked food's not exciting or whatever, you will enjoy raw food more than cooked food. Yeah, give it time, but you will. Way more, because it loves you back. So you don't have any, there's no guilt, there's no weird feelings around it. There's no addiction around it. You actually choose to eat it, rather than it choosing you, or the addiction choosing you. And it is so tough that most people will give up. Most people will give up. The, the trick is just keep going. Eventually you will get there. It, it's not about being tough or smart or having all the education, all the knowledge, but you just keep going. And, and really the way that people have kept going is finding great teachers, connecting with mentors, um, connecting with communities of people, and then just being totally honest with yourself. It's, it's another part of the great work of life, really being completely honest with yourself to a point that you're happy to say, hey, it's my fault, I was wrong, I'm bad, I made the wrong decision, I made a mistake. Um, you have to be prepared to say that to yourself. Not, oh, it's that other person, my mum and dad said this to me when I was younger and it's that, you know, none of that matters. Um, it all comes down to you, you living with yourself all the time, so you've got to deal with you and your experiences and everything that's coming up. So, for me, another incredible butterfly went past. For me, like, the raw, the raw thing is about truth. It's about experiencing life at the highest level, trying to at least. It's about experiencing health at the highest level. Um, no addictions, no stimulants. Nothing upsetting my digestive system. Uh, feeling the body, respecting the body, loving the body, and all that stuff. It doesn't make you a superhuman, unfortunately. It doesn't mean you'll turn into a chimpanzee and be able to jump around trees and all that. But, um, but it's my preference, and I believe it's most people's preference, but most people can't handle giving up the addictive foods because they use these foods um, for various reasons and, um, and a whole number of things. It's also that it connects them, the, these foods connect them to other people um, in their life. So I guess I'm in a fortunate position. I was able to go raw, I was able to give it a try. I was open-minded to it, I found fantastic teachers, I went to events, I totally committed to the whole thing. Spent a lot of money, uh, probably more than almost anyone on this journey. Uh, honestly, like, maybe not everyone, but... Um, Travelling, going to events, paying for the ticket for events, uh, paying for accommodation, never begrudged it. Not once. Not once. I never left the raw food event thinking that I'd wasted money or lost money. Just thankful. Um, very often, all of my savings went into going to an event. Every single bit. Why would I hold back? You know? The risk of getting sick, the risk of illness, the risk of not being your best, you know, things are too big a risk for me. Too big a risk. I'm not. I'm not really looking to live too much of a risky life. I just want to um, live a long, happy, healthy life. Uh, contribute to other people. Live in amazing circumstances. Be around great people. I think teaching, making music. I want to do all that. Build fantastic communities. Um, that's what I'm all about, really. some small impact on helping the world be a better place and uh, that's what I want to focus on you know being here out in, this is a beautiful place to be out in Thailand and all this but I, I would I would much rather be at the fruit festival right now making it happen 
you know. That's why I think I, I want to do more throughout the year. It's like one fruit festival a year is just not enough. I really want to get this community together, you know, get more events happening, get the incredible teachers that we've got in front of more people, personally get in front of more people. Um, so the, the, this video's probably changed a lot, but, but from the title, but, you know, cooked. Just, you know, if, if there's something better, why go for second best? That, that's really my, my thought about it. For a lot of you, if you're looking for the help or advice or guidance, you might need coaching. Not everyone needs coaching. It's not worth it for a lot of people to do coaching. Um, and it's about too much of a commitment for, for some people. But you're going to take a lot of time to get this right without a coach or people in your life that really know how to do this and can help you with it. And um, there's not that many. And there's not that many that aren't, you know, very busy. And um, But if it, if it is of interest to you, if it's something that you need or want or are looking for right now, then you can check out my, um, my coaching information. I'll put a link down below. But thank you for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one. Keep going forward. Make small little changes every day. And um, think about the long game, the long term. You want to, you want this to work for you over lifetime. It doesn't matter if you get it right today or this week or this month. Lifetime. That means if you do it within the next five years, ten years, but you do it for the rest of your life. If you get it right, you're good. If you want to get it right quicker, then coaching is probably for you. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.